All right, good morning, everybody. So here we are Thursday morning, and uh, we're in the last section of the book, of the chapter, sorry, uh, uh, chapter 9. And so we're looking at 9.8, which is starts on page 418. And you'll notice if you'll turn to page 418, we're talking about surface area and volume of a circular cylinder. All right, we're making that distinction because technically we can have a cylinder whose base, bases are triangles or octagons or whatever. And so even though that's not our traditional idea of a cylinder, um, they are considered cylinders, okay? So we're very, making this distinction of circular cylinders. All right, what we think of just the standard way we think of cylinders. So uh, let's take a look here on page 418, and notice it tells you first that the the uh, formula for the volume of a cylinder is the same as a prism. All right, I mean a square prism, rectangular prism triangular prism it's still it's the same uh, formula so let's look at the, that again okay so the formula we're using is volume is equal to BH V is equal to BH or base times height okay so if we're still just a little bit confused from yesterday all right think about what we're doing all right, if we look at a cube or a rectangle, prism, okay, if we look at that, all right, your old way, the way you first learned volume was length times width times height. Now let's think about that. So on this drawing, that would be the length, that would be the width, and that would be the height. So think about what you're doing when you're taking the length times the width. What is length times width? Length times width is our old formula for area. So when you take the length times the width, you're actually finding, what you're doing is finding the area of the base. Okay? So when they say BH here, they actually, they're doing this. They're taking length times width, which is the area of the base. So that's what the B actually is in that formula. It's the area of the base times the height. Okay? So when we go to a cylinder, oops. Do that every time, and I remember, okay, you can't see that, so that needs to be dotted. Okay, so when you're looking at a cylinder, now let's look at what the base is. The base is a circle. So we're finding the area of the base, we're actually finding the area of a circle. All right, and the area of a circle is what? Pi r squared. Okay? So, in this case, the one in the book, they're uh, on uh, page 418, they're showing you a radius of 4, okay, 4 inches, and... 
So let's just take that much. So four inches, that's the radius. So we're gonna use pi 3.14 and then r, which is four squared. Okay, so then that would be 3.14 times four squared is 16, not eight, 16. And then you're going to take 3.14 times 16. And that gives you 50 and 24 hundredths, 50 and 24 hundredths square inches. So that's the area of the base. So same thing, area of the base times the height. And it shows you here that we have a height of three inches. Okay? So if we take 50 and 24 hundredths square inches and we multiply it by three inches, okay, then we're going to get 150 and 72 hundredths. Now, inches squared times inches is going to be cubic inches. So there's the area of, or excuse me, the volume of the cylinder. All right? And even when you look over at the top of page 419, in that skills check, you've got three different cylinders to uh, to do. Now, number two, notice the cylinder is laying on its side. Just like some of those triangular prisms were laying on their side, and it might have been kind of confusing to you, what's the height? Because in that, with it laying on its side, it looks like 10 meters is the length. Okay? So 10 meters is not the length. Okay? If you stand that up on its base, again, the base is that circle, all right? And so then that, on number two there, the, the height would be 10, okay? So I hope that helps you when you get to that because it, it looks different, all right? So now we're looking at the surface area of a cylinder. And some people still have a problem. They get mixed up between surface area and regular area or volume, okay? So one of the things they tried to do to help you just a little bit was there in the middle of 419, they took that cylinder and laid it out in its net so you can see what the surfaces are. Remember, the surfaces that make up a cylinder are two circles, okay? And then what they call that lateral surface or curved surface, but when you cut it and lay it out, it's a rectangle, okay? So notice what they do in example two. They have an example of a cylinder, and this one is laying over on its side, okay? So still, the base are these circles, and it shows you that the radius of the one circle, I think that one was it, two inches? Or three inches, sorry. So the, the radius is three inches, and so you can find the area of that circle, right? And remember, the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, so if I fill in what I know, for pi we're using, again, 3.14, and the radius is three, so it's times 3 squared. So that's 3.14 times 3 squared is 9, not 
6, 9. So then if I take 3 times 3.14, okay, then I, or 9, sorry, times 3.14, I get 28 and 26 hundredths. Square inches. Okay, that's the area of one circle. I've got two of them. So I'd want to take this times two. Okay, and that's going to give you 56 and 52 hundredths square inches. 56 and 52 hundredths square inches. Now, we have to find the area of this lateral surface. Now again, think about that cylinder, okay? Think about our example of a cylinder. This curved surface, when I split it down the middle and lay it out, it's a rectangle. Now, what's the length of that rectangle? The distance is the distance around it, okay, which is the circumference. So the circumference of the circle is the length of that curved piece when you lay it out flat. And then it shows you that the height is 7 inches. So even though this is laying on its side and it has that label there, again, if you stand it up, so it's sitting on one of its bases, then you can see that that's the height. So if we stood it like this, here's your, here still is your seven inches, and here's your circle with a radius of three inches. Okay? So I'm gonna take the circumference, and remember how we do circumference, circumference of a circumference can only be of a circle circumference is either pi d or 2 pi r we have the 2 there because you have to have 2 r's to make a, a d 2 r's make a diameter 2 radius okay so either way so i know if my radius is 3, my diameter is 6. So that would be 3.14 times 6. And 3.14 times 6 is um, 18, 18 and 84, 18 and 84 hundredths inches. Okay? And then that's times 7. So, that's going to be 28, 6, 58, 56 and 5, 61. 713. So there is the area of the lateral surface. So then, oh, why did I do dollars there? I was doing money with fifth grade, sorry. So then you have the total, this area here, plus two of these, okay? So that's 131 and 88 hundredths square inches plus 56 and 52 hundredths square inches. Okay, that's going to make 10, 15, 8, 8. Don't do that. 
So it's 188 and 5 tenths or 50 hundredths square inches. Okay. Oh yeah, that'd be four, sorry. So 100, 188 and four tenths square inches or 188 and 40 hundredths square inches. Okay, so that's your surface area. So remember, for the volume, you find the area of the circular base, okay? And you take that times the height, that's gonna give you your volume. Surface area, you find the area of the circle times two, because there's two of them, and then you find the area of the lateral surface, which is gonna be the circumference, okay, times seven, and then you add those two together, and that gives you the area of the surface. All right, hope that helps you. Look at the, the uh, publisher video, the PowerPoints, and uh, ask right out there on Classroom in the comments section uh, if you have any questions. Otherwise, we can answer some questions tomorrow for those of you who will be here. And uh, then we'll be ready, really, to uh, review the chapter and then take the test. Okay? So we'll see you out here next time, and take care of yourselves and your family, and God bless.